everybody, I am Beth Lewis, mom, educator, and director of Save Our Schools Arizona, a nonpartisan statewide movement of parents, educators, grandparents, business owners, and community members who know that strong public schools make a strong state. Despite Arizona's $1.8 billion budget crisis, Republican lawmakers continue to prioritize the off-the-rails, irresponsible ESA voucher program that is set to siphon nearly $1 billion from local public schools that are chosen by over 90% of Arizona families. Vouchers are disproportionately benefiting wealthy families in Arizona, and they are directly harming our low-income students. Republican Majority Leaders Speaker Ben Toma and Senate President Warren Peterson stubbornly refuse to reform the program even while 80% of Arizona voters across party lines are demanding that they do so. While dedicated teachers are struggling to afford basic classroom supplies like pencils, paper, and Kleenex, our taxpayer dollars are being diverted to fund non-educational luxury items like these, like bounce houses and ski trips and kitchen appliances for ESA voucher recipients. Shame. Shame. ABC 15 analyzed $300 million worth of voucher spending from the last year, and they found exorbitant non-educational expenses, which you can see visually represented by the items here with us today. Some examples, $35 million in Amazon purchases, $5 million at the Apple store, $2 million in music instruments, $62,000 for driving luxury vehicle lessons, and $1.2 million spent on martial arts instruction. Oh, no. yeah. This is not an appropriate use of our taxpayer dollars ever, but certainly not when our public schools are funded at 49th in the U.S. and teacher pay is straggling far behind the national average. Certainly not when public school students are going without desperately needed resources basic supplies, field trips, and extracurriculars. Today we have the names of several thousand Arizona voters who have signed our petition in the last few weeks to demand ESA voucher reform in this year's budget. Yeah. And that continues to grow. Please go on our website and sign the petition. These signatures represent the vast majority of Arizona voters who want ESA vouchers to be accountable and want our public schools to be prioritized for public funds. Our state legislature has a clear choice. Make devastating cuts to our local public schools and essential services, or B, work with Governor Hobbs to rein in this irresponsible, out of control voucher program and return public funds to our schools. A budget without ESA voucher reform is no budget at all. Legislative District 24, home to Cartwright, Glendale L, PXU, Peoria Unified, Glendale Union, and Washington L. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Growing up in Arizona, I loved to learn. I'd come home from school and play school, placing my stuffed animals in front of a chalkboard to teach them. I'd even skip recess to eat lunch alone in my classroom, reading a book while my teacher prepped for the next period. I was that kid. And in those moments, I would often hear my teachers talking about financial stress and strain. Then I started to see that financial stress when my fine arts classes were cut to fewer days per week and when my beloved high school theater teacher had to split her time between two high schools. I thought as I got older and as more headlines shamed Arizona nationally for the way our education system was failing, things would change. But it hasn't, not for lack of trying, because every single one of these people has been out in the streets knocking on doors for years. It's because of years. 
years. And we've been successful and had the corrupt Supreme Court shoot down our initiatives. So why are things not changing? It's because of power, corruption, and the majority in this these halls of power that is hell-bent on privatizing education and profiting off the backs of our children. It is yeah. wrong. Yeah. Shame. Shame. The fraud and abuse of ESA vouchers is infuriating, especially considering the massive unmet needs of the 90% of families who choose Arizona public schools. You're telling me that instead of our tax dollars going to having a piano in a classroom where uh, hundreds of kids can use it for decades, we're paying for one family to have a piano in their living room? This is ridiculous. It is an abuse of taxpayer dollars and no Arizonan should be okay with this fraud and this manipulation of our uh, education system. Republicans refuse to come to the table to reform this program. It is bankrupting our state. We have so many other needs that are being unmet, including housing and health care. But we're spending so much money on this wasteful voucher program. It's absolutely shameful. I'm now an auntie to six kids growing up in Arizona public schools. My mom is still a paraprofessional in public schools. I'm determined to rein in this reckless ESA scam for them and for every child who deserves an equitable education in their neighborhood school, regardless of zip code. And we cannot wait. We need this in the budget this year because waiting another year means potentially millions of dollars that will be thrown down the drain on this wasteful and reckless program. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Scott Menzel. I'm the superintendent of Scottsdale Unified School District, and you just heard from one of our alumni in Scottsdale Unified, and we're so grateful for her advocacy for all children in the state of Arizona. I want to start by saying that this is not about school choice. I'm a proponent of school choice, and I think it's important that parents have choice, but I also think choice has to come with accountability. We need to ensure that every child, regardless of where they live, has an access to a high quality public education experience that their schools are properly funded, and that they get the support they need to achieve their full potential. So what does the expansion of the voucher program mean in a school district like Scottsdale? Well, in the second quarter of last year, the school year we just finished, nearly 85% of all the vouchers that were given in my district were to people who never enrolled in Scottsdale Unified School District. Because we're an out of formula district where we don't receive state aid funding, the taxpayers in Scottsdale pay for the students who enroll in our district. That 85% represents $38 million of new funding from Arizona taxpayers to fund the people who have already chosen to attend private and parochial education opportunities. So again, I'm not opposed to choice, but I am absolutely insistent that we must have accountability for that choice. In order to ensure that our students need uh, receive what they need, we can think differently about how that money could be spent. So when I think about how you can spend nearly a billion dollars on evidence-based efforts to ensure that every child is supported, I think of four things just off the top of my head. First, Arizona is woefully behind the rest of the nation when it comes to investing in early childhood education. From uh, the first three years of life, we know the importance of brain development. Preschool and pre-K ensures that kids enter kindergarten prepared to be successful, and yet we don't invest in our youngest learners before they come to school. We also don't invest in full-day kindergarten. Uh, so districts like mine, where the community supports our schools through an m and override, we have an opportunity to provide full-day kindergarten, but so many school districts do not, and yet that's an advantage that all of our students deserve and need. Thirdly, the cost of special education services continues to grow as we struggle to find qualified staff in our schools. And so we have to rely on contracted service providers which charge a premium for those services. Yet our kids with individualized education plans deserve no less than the very best that we can provide for them. And fourthly, as we look at the rising cost of health insurance and the impact that has on our staff, disproportionate impact on our classified hourly workers, who can't afford to pay for the full family health insurance premiums because of how high they are. 
The state of Arizona can do better to support the public education system. They can ensure that our students, regardless of their zip code, have the support they need. And I encourage the legislature not to double down on a bad decision, but instead to reform the system in order to ensure that we meet the needs of every student. Good morning, Arizona. I'm Signa Oliver. I'm the Phoenix Union Governing Board member serving Ward 2, which includes South Mountain, North High, Bioscience, and Wilson Ed Prep, and Wilson Prep. I'm a public school graduate of South Mountain High School. Go Rebels. <laughs> I am compelled to speak about Arizona ESA voucher scam that is bankrupting our state's budget and public education. Public schools are the core of any community. Educators and administrators of public schools must have specific educational backgrounds, experience, and certifications. This ensures that students are receiving the best education from the most qualified people. If not for my public education, I shudder to think what kind of life I, my children, and grandchildren would have right now. As a governing board member for Phoenix Union, I have direct access to the budget deficits that are hitting public education, and the ESA ex expansion fraud has made that struggle more difficult. This fraud is simply a subsidy for people who can handily afford to send their children to private and parochial schools. Yeah. My tax dollars should never subsidize the children of people who have the resources to afford to send their children to private and parochial schools. Disadvantaged communities should never have to subsidize the ultra-rich children's privileged education wants. The Arizona ESA program was first established in 2012. It was the first in the entire nation. However, when it first began, the program was limited to students who met specific criteria, such as foster care or special education status. It was expanded, and currently the ESA voucher scam has been expanded and allowed parents to use, utilize public monies to purchase educational services from private schools, poor quality educator, education providers, and luxury item vendors. Ooh. Due to this EHA, ESA vouchers fraud and subsidy for the very rich, Phoenix Union and other districts within Arizona are having to take drastic measures to provide basic education for public schools that are already starving for resources. But wasn't that the plan all the time? Yes. yes. Many districts are having to eliminate essential programs, not hire the necessary staff needed to meet the needs of every student, and even close schools in neighborhoods that desperately need them. We must demand a rollback of the ludicrous expansion of the ESA voucher scam and place defined qualifications, limitations to receive any public funds for anything other than public schooling. Thank you. Morning. My name is Kathy Bolts. I have had an ESA for my son as a student with a disability since 2017. I am a member of the board of Save Our Schools Arizona Network. The universal ESA program has been harmful to the students with disabilities for whom the ESA program was originally created. Financial harm has happened to families who have tried to use ESAs for their students who have a disability. Since the Horn administration quit issuing new cards in February 2023, new ESAs have had to float costs as they wait for reimbursement, sometimes for months. For example, families of kids receiving funding for autism eligibility must float over $30,000 or nearly $3,000 per month. Most people can't afford that, so without cards to use the money, ESA for disabled students now only works for the wealthier people who can afford to float the funds. People with children with special education needs are now deciding not to renew their ESAs because they cannot afford it. The lack of communication is harmful for students with disabilities. The ESA program at the Arizona Department of Education has taken hours to answer the phone since Horn took office. Last time Superintendent Horn had an ESA press conference, 
when they explained the ghost student conspiracy among their ESA staff. They said they only had ESA about three quarters staff. This staff has taken months to respond to emails or help desk requests. Universal ESAs have harmed the overall reputation of the ESA program. The program that has served many disabled students for over a decade is threatened by the absurd and wasteful spending choices of Universal ESA students. These purchases have been encouraged by the ESA handbook that was rewritten in early 2023 by the American Federation for Children as directed by Superintendent Horn's political appointee. Access to quality education options is worse now. Many scam schools have popped up. They're happy to take a full quarter's funding, claim to be inclusive, and then ask you not to bring your disabled child back after their first week because of their disability. Schools that exclude the disabled, whether for disability or for not aligning with religious statements of belief or religious doctrine choices are most common now. These schools oppose committing to meeting the educational needs of disabled students, even though over 6,000 ESA students have over $30,000 in funding. When so much money goes to church schools without accountability, our taxes become ties that these churches send as, spend as they please. The church school choir, whose expenses are all paid by ESA funds, might fundraise for the new chapel for the church that runs the ESA qualified school, for example. Meanwhile, a student with executive functioning challenges whose work is not ready on time can be excluded instead of having adequate staffing to do the all day and every single day work to support the student's educational needs for reminders and extended timelines. Universal ESAs in the administration and brought has eliminated options for many disabled students. My name is Christina Bustos. I am a mother, an aunt, a community member, a board member for Save Our Schools Arizona Network, and a 20-year educator. I attended both public and private schools, and to be honest, I'm grateful for my public school experience here in Arizona. I learned how to speak, how to try and do things that really matter to me, how to speak, to use my voice. I would like to take a moment specifically to thank my high school English teacher and, math and history teacher, Valerie Wanaki Foster and Marcy Hutchinson for being the kinds of educators that made me continue to use my voice, and I'm grateful. I have seen quite a bit of policy changes specifically harming our public schools in the last 20 years. And today I'm asking that we think about the impact that vouchers have on all students, but specifically how they impact our neighborhood schools. I recently spoke to a family that was very upset that their school is closing because of low enrollment. It's an amazing school, but because of the low numbers at that school, they're facing school closure, not because it's not a great school, but because that while they have students, the district must make a difficult decision to keep doors open or not because the state has defended our public schools so significantly that there is no cushion when there are slight enrollment declines. I want to see universal vouchers stopped and investment in public schools be made. I want the public to understand that just like inflation is making it harder to make ends meet for all of us, on that same salary that we had before, public schools are finding it harder to make ends meet because district expenses have increased because of inflation and that there's less tax revenue coming in and because of the ballooning voucher program that overwhelmingly benefits the rich. Yes, we need more money in our public schools, appropriate funding, appropriate funding to support the diverse needs of our diverse student populations. I would like to sound the alarm for all of us who carried a petition spoke with our neighbors, had our cars painted, and love our public schools. Now is the time for us to get involved. Yes. We have yes. got yes. to yes. stop universal vouchers and start making larger investments in our public schools for our kids. We must start making calls, sign our petition, which you can find on our website, and rally one more time 
to help us before we lose education as we know it. Good morning. Good morning, Arizona ed education supporters. My name is Lisa Calderon, and I am a mom of four daughters. We live and have raised our family in Chandler, Arizona, and we choose public schools. Woo! Yeah! I stand before you not only as a proud parent, but also as a concerned citizen. I am concerned for the future of our children, for the integrity of our education system, and for the responsible use of our hard-earned tax dollars. Today, I come to express my deep concern for the lack of accountability, transparency, that are surrounding the Arizona Universal Vouchers, and how they are impacting our community, our schools, and our state. Let's talk about the impact of vouchers that they had on my community. This year alone, Vouchers have drained the Chandler Unified School District of $31 million. That's $31 million of our taxpayer money being redirected from public schools. Shame! Yeah. What's truly troubling is that 80% of those recipients in Chandler Boundaries have never attended public schools meaning that they have never contributed to our public school system. Let's be frank here. The intent of universal vouchers has always been to dismantle our public schools. Yes. Yes. And if we do not fight for some basic accountability measures and in, the impact will be felt in the future. As a parent who chooses public schools, I demand accountability. I demand transparency. And most importantly, I demand reform. Please prioritize public education, not privatize. It is time for our lawmakers to listen to the voices of parents like me. Parents who believe in the power of public education we're not asking for special treatment. We're simply asking for our tax dollars to be used responsibly yes. to benefit all children, yes, that's it. not just the select few. We need measures in place to track how our money is being spent, and we need child safety requirements that's right. to protect our students. I urge my fellow Arizonans to join us in this fight for accountability and transparency. Together, we can hold lawmakers accountable and ensure that our tax dollars are being used effectively and responsibly. AV lawmakers, will you respect the choice of all parents who entrust our public schools with the future of our children? Prove it. We're watching. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Fontiayer, a current high school senior at a public charter school in the Metro Phoenix area. Because of my involvement with Save Our Schools Arizona since my fifth grade year, actually, I fundamentally understood that our public schools are extremely underfunded for quite a while now. However, over the past eight years, I've come to fully understand what that lack of funding means for my education through my personal experience. That lack of funding means that a great number of my teachers, in fact, almost half per year, have left my school almost every year of my academic career. This year, for example, an AP government teacher left halfway through the academic year. My peers and I did not have the support that we needed to complete our AP curriculum. Instead, my peers and I had to find hours per week outside of school, time that some of us did not have, to dedicate towards our own personal study. 
It means that our school has been forced to cut valuable programs and take money away from student-led clubs. My school can no longer dedicate funds towards the activities that make my school what it is. Instead, it's being forced to raise club fees, limiting who can actually participate. It means that when our legislature cut money from public schools, it put the burden of funding on the shoulders of families who were already struggling to make ends meet. My school fundraises as much as it can, but there's only so much that families can contribute. It means that when my school lost more funding this year, it had to cut tens of thousands of dollars from teacher salaries and teacher stipends. Many teachers who loved their jobs were forced to leave my school because their salaries were simply no longer sufficient. It means that my graduation this Friday is bittersweet because I'm no longer sure that the school that I've attended for the past eight years will be able to continue. And this is not my school's fault. It relies upon our legislature to give it enough funding to survive. However, our legislature is failing our public schools and the one million students in them. Instead of investing in the education of myself and my peers, it continues to choose to allocate money into a voucher fraud-ridden program that is exceptionally vulnerable to monetary abuse. This Friday, I leave Arizona's K-12 public education system. But that does not change the fact that our legislature will continue to fail over one million students in our public schools. Arizona's legislature needs to invest in our future by funding public education, not pouring a billion dollars a year into a program that simply does not work. Thank you so much for being here, members of the press. Um, if anybody would like to have any questions, we can facilitate that or we can do